People want to be able to have a gun, but they want them to have guns in a reasonable manner. Gun control is back in the news. We look at the political reaction to the San Bernardino shooting and what it means for the next election. And no matter what laws they would have passed yesterday, would not have stopped the shooting that occurred in Colorado or in San Bernardino. Overwhelmingly, people in this country support closing the terror gap. We need to do something about this. Our face-off panel takes on the debate over more gun laws. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We're not going to be duped a third time. Looking for action, not words, we talked to the Culinary Union about why it's waiting to endorse and what it wants to see before committing to a candidate. From 8 News Now, this is Politics Now with Steve Sebelius and Patrick Walker. The latest mass shooting took place this week in San Bernardino, California, but mass shootings and how to stop them is back on the national agenda. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Sebelius. And I'm Patrick Walker. The reactions themselves were not unexpected. Democrats and Republicans dueling over tougher gun control laws. I spoke with a public policy expert at UNLV to see what he thinks it will take for gun control legislation to pass Congress and gauge local reaction to the shootings. After Wednesday's attack in San Bernardino, lawmakers began responding as we've come to see after these shootings. Governor Brian Sandoval spoke at Nevada's first Commission on Homeland Security meeting in Las Vegas. His details were still unfolding. No one knows what, what the motive was or, or why it happened, but first and foremost now we have to think about the victims of that tragedy. Other Republicans weighed in, including Senator Dean Heller, who said in part, my prayers go out to the families impacted by this cruel and thoughtless act. Democrats, led by Senator Harry Reid, are calling for tougher gun laws. UNLV public policy professor Lee Burnick says there's a disconnect between the votes on Capitol Hill and constituents. There's generally widespread support for background checks and uh, that support goes across ideology. Background checks on private gun sales in Nevada are included in an initiative on the 2016 ballot. Burnick supervised a 2014 survey of registered voters in Nevada that includes ballot initiatives. The survey shows 80% of Nevadans support that initiative. Further analysis shows 67% of conservative voters support it, as do 96% of liberals. People want to be able to have a gun, but they want to have guns in a reasonable manner. A similar nationwide Pew Research study found 85% of Americans support background checks, including 79% of Republicans surveyed. So what will it take for lawmakers to echo the public sentiment? Burnick says more people need to vote for specific issues rather than voting for political ideologies. You have to make this background check or something the single issue that could defeat a member of Congress. They'll change if they're going to lose their job. Well, as tough as it is to say, you almost know what the reaction will be because we've been through this a few times now. Yeah, definitely. It's becoming all too common and the reactions are becoming, you know, all, all too uh, predictable. And, uh, and so, you know, nothing really changes. And it's really, it's, it's very difficult to figure out what law, what package of laws uh, is really going to make a difference and actually stop this before it happens to get out in front of it. Do you think it would, do, would you agree that it would be voting for a political ideology rather than a, or t rather than a candidate, rather than an ideology, or yeah, where would you go there? Yeah, I think that's part of it. The, the only trouble is people who are pro-Second Amendment who oppose gun control will vote on that issue alone. The people who support gun control uh, vote on a number of different issues. So the advice from the professor, I think, is pretty well taken. Well, that background check initiative will be pretty hotly debated over the next year. In this week's Face Off, we put the gun control solutions offered by lawmakers to our panel. In Face Off, joining me is Annette Magnus, Executive Director of Battleborn Progress, and KXNT's Alan Stock, talk radio host in town. Thank you both for coming in. So, of course, the topic this week, we're talking about gun control. That is at the forefront again. One of the things we're talking about, the FBI terror watch list, a report from the Government Accountability Office, Annette, talked about uh, in a 10-year period, 2004 to 2014, uh, 2,200 times terrorists, uh, suspected terrorists, were able to purchase guns at about a 90% success rate. What's your reaction, first and foremost, just to hearing that statistic? It's horrifying to me, and it's a huge problem when you have Al-Qaeda making videos saying they should come to the United States to get their guns because they're easily accessible. 
you know, we, we should not be known for that. We should not be known that this is the, the country you go for, for terrorists to go to get their guns. I, I just think that's something we should be ashamed of as a country. And it, it's something we need to do something about immediately because it's a huge problem. And you talk about that 90% success rate. I mean, based on that report, how do you respond to that? Well, you know, what is happening is that people are being able to legally buy guns. The guns that were used in San Bernardino were all legally purchased. Even the president said that. They're legally purchased. There's not a whole lot you can do uh, unless you're trying to figure out someone's disposition, what their intent is. Now, the, the president, through his spokesman, said that uh, if we have more gun control, we will deter terrorism. And I'm not sure how any aspect of gun control would in any way whatsoever deter anyone who is determined to go out and do the things that the people in San Bernardino did. They were, they were determined to kill, and they legally purchased guns. And I don't know any way you can determine a person's intent uh, when they go to buy a gun. People can flip easily. There are background checks in this country federally for gun dealers, for licensed gun dealers who own legitimate gun stores like here in Nevada. But then there are loopholes in that law as well that say that internet sales or even gun shows, which we have a ton of those here in Nevada, are not necessarily beholden to those same laws. They are not beholden to those same background checks. So you're seeing people who are wanting to purchase guns go on the internet or go to these gun shows from some unsavory characters and buying these weapons illegally and having access to them. And so that is what a background check initiative like the one being proposed in Nevada would do is close those loopholes again to make it harder for criminals, for mentally ill folks and for terrorists from being able to access those weapons. And again, I think we need to do something about this. It, we can't just have this open door for these people. If we can make it one step harder or two steps harder to, for these people to access weapons, in my mind, that's enough. Have you been to gun shows? Yes. Okay. When you go to a gun show and you go to a dealer uh, who has bought a space there, they are all legitimate and they all run back check, uh, background checks. All of them do. Now, if you're telling me that there are people out there who are nefarious and who will take guns and they will sell them illegally to other people, uh, I'm going to agree with you. And no background check, no law is going to be able to deal with that if somebody wants to commit a crime. Uh, somebody has a gun, they're a bad person, they want to sell it to another bad person, they're not going to even do it, they're going to do it under the table. We actually have video from a Reno gun show of a dealer who was there, bought the space, and they were selling guns illegally to somebody who shouldn't have well, had them. Well, then that one person should be dealt with because they violated the law. But no additional laws that you can uh, create or perpetrate are going to stop people who are committed to do what they're doing. I but completely disagree with that. I think that's another excuse proposed by the NRA and the right so that they don't have to do anything. So let's just keep doing more of the same because clearly that's working since we have a mass shooting every week in this country. We've had more mass shootings in this country than days this year. That is, in, that is not normal. That Enough is enough. Yeah, we we have, have, not, have to do something. We have not had more mass shootings in days. That's not true. And, and the, it is and, true. And, and, the, and, the statistics and back the, that up. I have facts. And when the president comes out and every time there's a shooting, he politicizes this. You have a president who no matter what goes on, he politicizes the far left and the president politicizes. They always yell, we the, need more they gun laws. politicized it. Yesterday, a day after a mass shooting, the, re the right refused to take any action when they had an opportunity to lead on this issue. I'm tired of seeing an action. Stop stalling and actually take some steps to do I something. I know what you wanted the right to do yesterday because take the shooting. Vote. No, 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 no. The shooting that occurred in San Bernardino. The laws that are being proposed would have not stopped that shooting, nor the shooting but in Colorado. what about domestic violence victims? No, wait, 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 what no, no, about, no, no, these, what about back, all wait, these different shootings minute, that are happening every single go back, day? Go back 80 to what you were talking about. people dying a day is go not back, normal. Go back to what you were talking about. You said that right after the shooting, the right refused to pass these laws. I'm saying to you that no matter what laws they would have passed yesterday, would not have stopped the shooting that occurred in Colorado or in San Bernardino. I mean, let's keep consistent on this. In terms of uh, domestic violence laws, you're not going to stop domestic violence anyway, no matter how many laws that you, you pass. The guy in Colorado, if you're aware of it, uh, beat his wife, beat his wife severely, uh, created, uh, made babies with other women while they were married. He, he was, he's an animal. And I don't know his whole background uh, and, and how he got his guns. Supposedly, it was legally. You're not going to stop somebody with an ill intent. There's no way you can stop someone, no matter how many laws you pass.
Well, it's uh, uh, the one thing that I think Annette said that's, that's uh, uh, absolutely true is that, you know, these things will not, these things will make it harder for people to legally acquire guns. But what Alan said is also true. It's not going to stop people who are intent on getting guns from doing it. Absolutely. As you could tell by, the, you know, the tone and the, the level of, you know, it, it really just going at it, this is something that is divisive and it's something that's going to take a lot of work before we move forward. Absolutely. Well, finding support in the Silver State. Ben Carson has hired a state director in the race now. We'll look at how many, or how rather, it may shore up evangelical support, but hurt with more libertarian-minded Republican voters. Quality of life. It's important to all of us who live here in Las Vegas. But for those of us who are over 65, that quality of life can sometimes be hampered by the presence of heart problems, blood sugar issues, or breathing difficulties. If you're Medicare eligible and have been recently diagnosed with diabetes, chronic heart failure, cardiovascular disease, or a chronic lung disorder, Humana may have a health plan for you. Find out how a Humana Gold Plus plan could provide you with all the benefits of a Medicare Advantage plan, plus additional resources for your specific health needs, including our growing network of physicians that are committed to delivering the highest quality of care to all of our members, and convenient locations opening near you, which feature the latest in healthcare technology and a patient-centered comprehensive care model designed to help manage our members' health. Call to speak to a licensed Humana sales agent or visit a Humana Guidance Center today to learn about our plans or stop by one of our clinics. Hey, you ready? I can't go. Our DVR is full. We're in negotiations. We've reached an impasse. Here's the latest offer. I delete all my Game of Thrones and Mackenzie gets to keep my little pony. I, I can't work with this. Give me something I can work with. Get Contour TV for as low as $19.99 a month when you bundle and add a Contour DVR with three times the DVR storage of CenturyLink. Ask how to get a $200 prepaid card. Switch to Cox. I can work with this. This is good. At Dollar Loan Center, the word no is a good thing. No collateral required. No prepayment penalties. No application fees. And best of all, no checking account required. When banks say no, we say yes. Getting a signature loan up to $2,500 or an auto title loan up to $10,000 from us is a no-brainer. Dollar Loan Center. Lending simplified. Hey, welcome back. This is The Race Now, where we take a look at the other top political stories making headlines in our state. Republican presidential candidate Dr. Ben Carson has finally picked a Nevada state director. It is Reverend Paul Mark Goulet from the International Church of Las Vegas. Carson held a rally at the mega church in November. Goulet will, laid, will lead Carson's grassroots efforts in Nevada. An effort to repeal the state's new business tax to pay for education can move forward. A judge sided with controller Ron Connect, who is one of the men behind the initiative petition. It is a victory for Connect and a setback for Governor Brian Sandoval, who cobbled together the two-thirds of lawmakers necessary to pass the tax. Initiative backers must still gather 55,000 signatures in order to get it on the November 2016 ballot. The Western Governors Association held its winter meeting in Las Vegas. At the top of the agenda are transportation, health care, and cybersecurity. Wildfire season will also be on the list and how to make sure it doesn't deplete state resources in fighting all of them. Well, Carson is really playing on his popularity among the religious voters by hiring a megachurch pastor. And Steve, do you see this helping or hurting the grassroots cause for Carson? Well, I think with the, with the base, with the people that uh, Carson appeals to most evangelical voters, it's definitely going to help him. Uh, he's kind of speaking their language w w in that respect. But for the members of the Republican Party for whom, you know, religious expression is a little less comfortable and they're some, they're not something they really want to see in their candidate, that's definitely going to uh, have an impact for him as well. Well, now as we start to look for those endorsements, is it time for culinary to weigh in? Well, that's what all three Democratic candidates have said, and our pushback is to say, well, what are you going to do about it today? I asked the Culinary Union's political director why her group hasn't endorsed a presidential candidate and the issues on which they want to see action first. This holiday season, give the gift that's hard to wrap, but easy to give. Give a steal. Legendary chainsaws. 
hardworking steel blowers, and the full line of quality steel outdoor power equipment. Steel, built in America, sold locally, and the gift that's number one on everybody's wish list. Visit steeldealers.com. The holidays are here and so is Toyotathon. Wrap up a great year-end deal on a reliable Toyota, like 0% APR financing on many of our most popular models. And every new Toyota comes with a two years or 25,000 miles no cost maintenance plan. Right now, lease the new 2015 RAV4 for just $159 per month with Toyota Care, our no cost service plan for two years or 25,000 miles. Make the holidays happier at Toyotathon. Uh-oh. <laughs> Toyota, let's go places. Moving a TV is a real pain. Would that be easier if I had Prism TV from CenturyLink? Sure. I've got CenturyLink's wireless set-top box, which makes it pretty easy. Let me show you. I could move it here. Or here. Even here. Switch to CenturyLink. Get the Prism Essential TV package with internet for only $70 a month for one year with auto pay enrollment. Didn't even break a sweat. Till just now. Only one station can be the Valley's most watched. We could do a lot of damage if we were scammers. At 8 News Now, we'd like to say thanks for letting it be us yet again. Here we go. We're committed to bringing you accurate, honest reporting that you can count on morning, noon, and night. Why is the governor requesting this? Now you know isn't just a slogan, it's a promise. Families deserve answers. 8 News Now, still the Valley's number one source for news. Now you know. You're watching Politics Now. Well, one thing Democrats will need to gain background in in the next election is the support of the labor unions. But so far, Nevada's largest, the culinary union, has not endorsed a presidential candidate. I sat down with Ivana Cancella, the union's political director, to see when they'll weigh in and who they may be supporting. Here's what she had to say. The caucuses are on Feb February 20th. Yep. The union has not endorsed yet. How come, how, how come with just like two months left to go, no endorsement? Because we have a responsibility to our members and not to politicians. And the biggest issue affecting our members, not just here in Vegas, across the country, is the excise tax that's part of, Obama of Obamacare. It's a 40% tax on workers' health care benefits. And our mission is not to figure out what people are going to do in 2017 when they're in office. It's to figure out what people are going to do in 2015. And we're not talking about the endorsement until we see what folks do to get this tax repealed. There are four bills in Congress that any of the candidates can and should be lobbying for. And while they've all come out against the tax, we're waiting to see what action they take yeah. on the issue. Is it really fair to blame the Democrats uh, on that issue, given that, you know, any attempt by by them to amend the law in any way mm -hmm. is is just going to open up an avenue for Republicans to come out and say we need to repeal this. You know, Washington's a weird place. I don't live there. I don't work there. And so you have a bill that was passed by Democrats and a Democratic president that today Republicans are trying to fix an issue that affects workers. So. Do I think that there are politics to be dealt with? Sure. But what we want to see is people do the right thing to fix our benefits. We're not really interested in playing this blame game anymore. And we just want to make sure that our benefits don't get taxed at 40 percent. You mentioned that Republicans are you're trying to, trying to uh, fix this uh, because uh, it's not just union uh, uh, health care plans. There are some right. health care plans that are enjoyed by people who are, who are more well off uh, that are also affected uh, uh, by this. Is it inconceivable that the union would ever endorse a Republican, or is that completely just off the well, table? We, we endorsed Brian Sandoval for governor in 2014. We endorsed his candidacy for AG back in the day. We endorsed Kenny Gwynn for governor back in the day. We've been a bipartisan union, and unfortunately, the Republican Party, in a lot of ways, has gone so far right that you can't even have a conversation about issues that affect us. And what we've seen is an opening through people like Senator Heller to take on leadership on an issue that affects our folks. And we may not agree on everything, but it's nice to see that there are Republicans who are willing to take the right stand on issues that affect our folks. Yeah, now Senator Heller uh, agrees wholeheartedly on, on this issue. Is there anybody in the Republican lineup running for president that that, that uh, concurs? And um, I think folks have kind of, some of the candidates have given some campaign time to talking about the issue, but none of the sitting senators have sat on, have signed on to Senator Heller's bill. They'll have the opportunity to vote for it if it comes up for a vote, and then we'll know where they actually stand. 
In terms of the issues, that's obviously the most important issue to the union. Are yep. there other ones that you're looking at? Or, or well, you know, a lot of people talk about the culinary as the center of Latino voters in the state. And that's true, but we represent people from 167 countries. And so immigration reform is tremendously important, not just because of the fact that it affects families every day, but because you have people who are literally in limbo because of a broken system. And so we're looking for a candidate to really take action, not just when they're in office. They could do things like have submitted an amicus brief to the appellate court as DACA and DAPA were being decided. They could do one for the Supreme Court now, right? Yep. It's taking these tangible steps as candidates versus making promises for when they're president. When you listen to the discussion, uh, I, when I, I listen to it, I've heard two kind of distinct things. I've heard candidates talking about a pathway to citizenship. Mm -hmm. And then I've ter heard candidates talking about a pathway to legal status, which are two very different things. And there's a right. wide gulf between those, th those two. Uh, w when you listen to that, what are you listening for? Well, really one is saying we want folks to continue to be here in the shadows. And they can stay. We're not going to deport them, but we're not going to treat them with the full weight of the law, which is what people who have been here working hard, raising their families for 20 years deserve, right? And so what I hear when you hear the Marco Rubios of the world talk about legalization and a pathway to a green card is you're forcing people to continue to wait and wait and bear the stress and frankly the unfairness of a system that has not served them. People don't want to be undocumented. People want to be able to access citizenship and DACA and DAPA, all sorts of different programs, right? It's a system that does not have a pathway for people to even get in line to be able to do the necessary steps to uh, become full citizens, so. Yeah. Well, it's safe to say they probably won't be endorsing Senator Marco Rubio, but Cancella also made the point that even though politicians look at the Culinary Union as a political entity, that's actually fourth or fifth on the union's list of priorities. Now, the Culinary Union endorsed President Obama in 2008, even though Hillary was the front runner. I asked her about that and if it's going to be a risk that they'll be taking with Bernie Sanders and what they consider when taking that risk. And that, and that was a risk, too, in, in 2008, because yeah. uh, th this was, uh, President Obama was not uh, uh, the tested uh, person back then. He was, he was an outsider. Right. Uh, he had some enthusiasm behind him. But Hillary Clinton was, you know, the inevitable candidate, right. and everyone thought she would be the nominee. Right. So you, you took a risk in, in, in that sense. Do you, do you think that the union will take a risk again? I don't know. I, I can't say what's happening across the country. I know that in speaking to our members, folks are looking for someone who's going to take action and not give promises. I think what we learned with President Obama is that, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. We're not going to be duped a third time. And so it's really looking to, and I said on immigration reform specifically, yeah. it's really looking to a candidate who's going to do more than just make promises. And we're going to have our ears very open to what our members want and what they're feeling and how they're looking at the election. Yeah. Now another point Cancella made is that when labor doesn't engage, the base doesn't turn out. And the 2014 election was certainly proof of that. Yeah, it looks like we'll be waiting a bit longer to see uh, where that endorsement goes. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, looking for money, Republican candidates gave speeches to the Republican Jewish Coalition this week. And following the money, we look at one of the coalition's biggest members, Sheldon Adelson. He gave the most money in the last election. What does he have in mind this time? That's next. I wanted the same plan that my mother had, senior dimensions. I've had senior dimension for over 20 years, and I love it. If you're eligible for Medicare, you need to take a look at the plan that offers you more than original Medicare. Senior Dimensions members pay a $0 monthly premium. Senior Dimensions members pay a $0 copay for primary care doctor visits. And our members pay a $0 copay for specialist visits. And a $0 copay for hospital stays as well. I wanted a plan that's been here as long as we have. Senior Dimensions is one of the longest standing local Medicare Advantage plans in Nevada. And our plan offers many Tier 1 preferred generic drugs for a $0 copay at most local neighborhood pharmacies. I like that I have plenty of doctors and specialists to choose from. Senior Dimensions offers a broad network of local providers, including Southwest Medical Associates, one of the largest and fastest growing multi-specialty groups in Nevada. It's what I want. And she gets what she wants. Don't wait. Call now. At Dollar Loan Center, getting a signature loan is easier than ever. 
you can complete the entire process online from the comfort of your own home. Go to don'tbebroke.com and fill out the online application in just four easy steps. You can also monitor your account, make payments, and check your balance from desktop computers or mobile devices. You never have to walk into a store. Visit us online today. Dollar Loan Center. Lending Simplified. I'm Alan Yarbro, sales manager, Jim Marsh Kia. Jim Marsh Automotive has just had one of our largest volume months in our history. Jim Marsh Automotive is tremendously overstocked with fantastic trade-ins. We have over 250 used cars to choose from, starting at only $99 per month. If you've been wanting a great used car, now is the time. This giant used car sale can be found at JimMarshKia.com, ready for immediate delivery, so don't miss out on this huge car sale. And remember, if you don't drive here, you can't save here. You're watching Politics Now. On Thursday, the Republican Jewish Coalition held a presidential forum in Washington, D.C. It featured all 14 Republican candidates. Donald Trump drew some criticism afterwards for what some consider to be Jewish stereotypes, mentioning their business savvy, saying things like, quote, we are all good with contracts, and he, quote, was a good negotiator like you folks. One thing the event did feature is some of the party's biggest donors, Steve. Yeah, Pepper, one donor uh, who is yet to back a candidate, Las Vegas casino mogul Sheldon Adelson. But this week's Following the Money, we look at where Adelson has spent his money in the past and how successful or unsuccessful he's been. In the 2012 election, Adelson donated $93 million to a super PAC that must disclose their donors. Some reports have his total donations at around $150 million, but because of disclosure rules, we only know where that $93 million went. From the Center for Responsive Politics, $30 million went to Restore Our Future, a Mitt Romney super PAC. As you know, Romney lost. $23 million went to American Crossroads, Carl Rove's GOP super PAC. $15 million went to Winning Our Future, the new Gingrich Super PAC. Gingrich lost as well. Next was the YG Action Fund, which is mainly backed by Adelson and supports Republican congressional candidates like Eric Cantor, Paul Ryan, and Kevin McCarthy. He gave $5 million to them and also to the GOP-aligned Congressional Leadership Fund. Adelson has promised to be more judicious in this election, saying he wants to back a winner. Interesting. It, well, I was just going to say before we go, very interesting to see again as we follow that money, uh, which way it's going to be going this year because it's a lot of decisions to make with so many candidates out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for watching Politics Now. If you have questions or comments, you can email us, politics at lasvegasnow.com. And we are your election headquarters for the next year. You can stay up to date online at lasvegasnow.com. Of course, watch us every Sunday online and right here on Channel 8. Thanks for joining us.